Good day, Matrix of 2024. My name is S.D. Marange. I come back to you with Mathematics Paper 2. We are going to start off with data handling. And the main purpose of this lesson is just to show you uh, what you're supposed to do, what you're expecting to do, as you are going to write it on the 4th of November. I hope you are prepared. And let me give you a heads up with data handling. It's a topic that you can easily score maximum marks if you are able to use your calculator effectively. I say calculator effectively. And when you talk of a calculator, uh, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, a calculator is not borrowed a day before you go into the exam. You need to get used to your calculator so that you are able to use it effectively and get all the marks. That's the secret behind passing the data handling. Now, let me take you through this. I'm going to take you through the topics and the mark allocation, that is the data handling, the expectations, and the, as well as questions. As for the questions, I'm using our trial papers that we wrote in September. So we'll look at those two questions that you answered there. Okay, then your statistics, you are expected to have plus or minus 20 marks. It can be 18, plus or normally plus or minus three. It can be from 17 up to 23. So in all, the average marks should be 20 marks. Now, when you are answering that, the first thing that, that you need, need to know, know is to know your mean. And you must know how to get it from the calculator. Using your calculator, finding your median, Median, you have to arrange your data in ascending or descending order. Mod, which is the most frequent score. Standard deviation, again, you take it from the calculator. You need to know how to find your range. Remember from your, your trial paper, you had a, paper, a question that was asking you about the range and the mod. This is what you learned from grade 10. Also, you look at quartiles, your lower quartile, upper quartile, interquartile range. We also have an option of a uh, five number summary where we'll be looking at five box and whisker after getting those uh, five number summary. And from that box and whisker, you can be asked to comment on the skewness of the diagram and of the data. Ogive, it must be grounded. That is a cumulative frequency curve. One mark, be sure that it's for grounded. Then the other mark is to use your maximum uh, upper class boundary with your cumulative frequency. Scatter plots, and please take note, when it comes to scatter plots, if they ask you to draw a scatter plot, these are just points. You don't join those points uh, when you are after plotting. The only thing that you are going to draw after scatter plot is the reg regression line, which is the one that you get from the calculator and you draw it. And when you are drawing it, it must be within the domain of the given data. So you must know that your, your line must not exceed the given domain. Then you, you also need to work with grouped and ungrouped data, graph interpretation. On graph interpretation, one thing that you can take note of, you might be given, asked to draw the graph, you might be asked to find cumulative frequency or frequencies from the given graphs. Then the outlier, you are not expected to, to use a, a formula. You can use a formula, the formula which says Q1 minus uh, 1,5 times interquartile range, and then Q3 plus 1,5 times interquartile range. You can use that one, but you can also not use it and find it uh, like what was asked in your trial paper. There was a question that wanted you to find the outlier. Effect of distorted data on the mean and standard deviation. They always love to ask you that question. Even though it's one mark, sometimes it can take you off the road. Because if you are not aware of what is happening, you will end up getting uh, confused and you lose marks. Normally, we have our slogan says, yes, I can. And I always say, once you tell yourself that, yes, you can, you are telling yourself from the bottom of your heart that you can do it. So please make sure that you are prepared for this. And on the 4th of November, 
you will not have the challenges with these topics if you are really prepared. So then this is the first question that I wanted us to look at. The effect of adding or subtracting, multiplying, dividing by the same number on the mean and standard deviation. Right. If you check here, my first column here is the values of x. These are just the scores that you have. Then the second column, we are looking at what happens when you add 5 to those scores. You can see 10 plus 5, 15. 14 plus 5, 19. You can see that. Then the third column, we are subtracting. We are subtracting. Then the, third, uh, the fourth one, we are multiplying by 3. Then here we are multiplying by 2. It just you can use any number. It's not like you have to be every time you must add 5 minus 7. Uh -uh. You are just using any number. So it depends with the question. Now look here. This is the mean that we get from these five scores. Now look at what happens when we add 5 to each scores. You will see that your mean increases by 5. Look at what happens when you sub, subtract 7 from each scores. You see that your mean decreased by what? By 19. At the same time, look at your standard deviation of those three scores. You see that there is no change. So adding or subtracting as the same score does not change your standard deviation. But let's look at what happens when you multiply. You see, when you are multiplying, uh, you see that your mean... You multiply it by 3. Your standard deviation is also being multiplied by 3. When you divide by 2, you see that your mean is subtracted by, divided by 2. Then your standard deviation is divided by 2. You can see that. So basically, yes, it might be one mark, but if you are not aware of this, you might think that the standard deviation will also increase by 5 or decrease by 5. Then you, as you can see, there is no change in the standard deviation, but there is a change in the, in the, in the mean. So those are the questions that you need to take note of. I'm sure you, you are well prepared of this one. It's, it's just a question where you don't even have to think twice. Just write your answer and you go in next to the question. Then this is the one that I was talking about, a scatter plot. Look at the points. You can see your points there. As you can see, our points are here. Oh, these are the points. Now look at your line where it's starting. So this is what I was saying. As you will be drawing this, your lines must not exceed the points. You can see there that our points are, the line is ending there because that's where my domain is starting there and ending there. So my points are supposed to be within that uh, given domain. So you must check that and know that we don't exceed. Yes, as you were taught, normally you need to look at 0 and 43. If you look at that, if I can write your y, it's 0 and minus 43,72. If you were to use that, you see that it don't have space for it. So if it's there, we don't want to see a line that goes to that. It must be clearly not there. Please make sure that you don't write it there. Otherwise, it will end up having your, your data being, uh, you lose marks in that way. So let's work with, with that. So this one, we don't want it. Please take note of that. Right, so this is the question, Kim. I will just quickly go through it so that you don't have a, I'm sure you have gone through this as you were revising with your, with your teachers and you, you were also assisted in pointing out where you have made mistakes. So you do have time now to correct so that these 12 marks, when they come again, you will be uh, able to answer them and plus the eight marks in paper, one. So can you see? Write down the mod, one mark. So mod, we are just looking at the score that is repeated most. You just look at the score that is repeated most. So this is the score that we have. That's your mod. Write down the range. Range, it's maximum value minus minimum. So from this, you should be able to pick out which one is my range. 
uh, which one is my maximum, which one is my minimum, then you subtract. Then, uh, as for number 1.1.3, for two marks, calculate the mean. You're supposed to punch all these scores. If you can punch them in the calculator nicely, you take your time, have a way. You can even use a pencil. Once you, you, you punch eight, uh, 82, you scratch it out. You punch 70, 64, you scratch it out. 55, 50, 41, 71, 78, 88, 98. You, you do that as you'll be scratching and you scratch with a pencil so that you know that you have picked up all the scores. Please uh, take it seriously because with this one, answer only, it gives you full marks. So if you miss a score and you are using a calculator, you don't put a, a total, it means that you lose those two marks. Because if you use another method of, um, of you getting x bar equal to summation of x over n, if I show the total nicely, and divide by 15. Uh, let's say you get a wrong total, but because you divide by 15, you might end up getting one out of two. But if you write answer only from the calculator and you make a mistake of leaving one score, it means that once you are saying answer only from the calculator, it's either maximum or zero. It's either you get two marks or you get nothing. But if you use this one, then you make a, if you make a mistake, of putting a, a wrong total, you might end up getting one. But please, let's not uh, relax and say, I will make a mistake and get one out of two. Make sure that you punch all the scores properly and you get your answer like that. Then when it comes to standard deviation, it, you get it from the calculator. So these three marks, they are from the calculator. You don't have to think twice. Then 1.1.5, depends on these two questions. So there is a CA. If I can talk about CA, it's called consistent accuracy. Consistent accuracy means that you, are, you know what to do. But because you have made a mistake in the previous answer, we won't penalize you for that. So you get your three marks irrespective of your wrong answers that you got from the previous answer. And please take note here, it's just a below one standard deviation. So there's no need for you to do uh, both x bar minus standard deviation, x bar plus standard deviation. You just do the below and you look for the one scores that are below. And it's always easy if you, if you want, take your time to rearrange your scores so that it becomes easier. Now, that's how you get, so these three marks, be rest assured that you are going to get them if they are, because you'll be using these previous two questions. Okay, let's move on to 1.2. The mean weight of eight people entering into a lift is 75 kilograms. The lift was, is a weight limit of 1,000 kilograms. Now look, I've got eight people. So the first thing, each one has got a mean weight of 75. The first thing is to get what is the weight that is already in the in the, in, the, in, the, in the lift. So you will see that 8 times 75, you get 600. Then for us to get to 1,000, it says how many people can still get into the lift assuming that the mean weight remains 75. So it means that we are having the same people getting into the lift. So we now need 400. And 400 uh, divided by 75, you will see that in your memo or in your what, you get 5.33. Then 5.33, we don't have... 5.33 human beings. Because it says how many people, how many people, these are natural numbers. That's one thing that you have to take note of. So you can't leave your answer as 5.3. You need to round down, not up. If you round up, you're going to have six people with six, seven, 75 kilograms, and it will be more than 1,000, and it will make the lift not to function well. That's one thing that you must know. So we round down to five. That's good. Right, then we're moving on to the question two. Grade eight results of two tests each written out of 50 are listed below. You are given the marks. Identify the outlier. Can you see? Identify. So you are looking at your scores. You are looking at your scores. There is one that will tell you that I am an outlier. Obvious, you will see that there is the score becomes an outlier. 
in that case. Now, determine the equation of determine the equation of the least squares regression line. You get your A, your B, and your equation. This one, please take note, it is already there in your formula. So you must know that. So you need to know this. Use the equation. It says use the equation. So even if your equation was wrong, the two marks here, you must get them. You can also get this answer from the calculator. Comment on the strength of correlation. The keyword here is correlation. So correlation is R from the calculator one mark. Then depending on the value that you get, you comment. That's how you do that. So boys and girls, these 20 marks, you can easily get them. So uh, let's prepare and we prepared well. Then in my departing note, I will say practice, practice, practice will make it perfect. Attack a topic at a time. You know what you are doing, where your challenge is. Then get all the trial papers from other provinces and practice. That will give you a good uh, preparation for the, that's why we call it a preparation exam. Target low hanging fruits. I like that one. You don't stress with questions that you'd see that I'm not gonna score marks. Target law hanging fruits. Above all, keep calm and pick up the law hanging fruits. Those are the law hanging fruits. And lastly, you must know that yes, I can, yes, I can, yes, I can, and you will be able to do well. Then, in lastly, the bad news is time flies, but the good news is that you are the pilot. You are able to, you are supposed to know what to do. Then it always seems impossible until it's done by Tatu Mandela. Thank you very much. Wish you the best in your forthcoming exams. Thank you very much. Sure, sure.